Since returning to the family farm in Dannyverk a few years ago, Shiamoka Scott Charmley has managed to control a serious mastitis problem in his herd with help from Dairy NZ's Smart Sam program, some Kiwi ingenuity and his vet Mary Lund. Now the farm supplies milk to Fonterra with some of the lowest somatic cell counts in the country. We're a low input, system two, running 78 hectares and we got a 23 hectare runoff just around the road. Um, milking 217 cows this year. When I came home, I'd been off driving bulldozers and tractors and I didn't know a hell of a lot about mastitis. I was, ignorance was bliss in that first season to a point we had, we were stripping cows every week and it was just crazy. We had an average cell count for the season of 269,000. We were getting Dairy NZ writing letters saying, you need to sort this out and we were just off grading all the time and it was a, we had cows constantly treated for mastitis and we were just getting nowhere with it. So we had to take some drastic measures and get it sorted. We tried a few different remedies, some that just gave me hands that smelt like peppermint. When you've got a real problem, when you've got staph mastitis, you've got to use hard drugs or cull them. If you've got staph, you've got to cull them pretty much if they're really infected. We got to around about December and it was just climbing flat out. It was starting to get dry and as the production was dropping off, the cell count was climbing and we were just on the borderline of grading all the time. So we herd tested, identified the cows that had high cell counts. We got our vet Mary in and we identified the cows that were high. We got her in, we sampled that milk and sent that off to be cultured to find out what we were actually dealing with, whether it was staph mastitis or um, strep mastitis. And we found out that it was staph. It is quite common for cows that become infected with a bug called Staphylococcus aureus. That's quite a difficult bug to treat during the season. Quite low cure rates with mastitis treatments. Better cure rates with dry cow treatment. Uh, but there will always be some that, that don't cure um, over the dry period. And so these cows remain infected and they can stay in the herd from one season to the next with that infection and they're a potential source of infection for the young cows coming into the herd. Scott's got really good records going back several seasons, so you can look up what treatments cows have had, the cell counts during the season, so um, they'll herd test four times during the season, so you can follow the cow's somatic cell count, which is an indicator of infection. Um, so if she's got a high somatic cell count, then you can see that that cow is infected and you can follow that through from one season to the next through herd testing records. It's a cheap early detection system. It was actually my cousin across the river. He made these years and years ago. And all it is is just a hunk of, you can buy it from steel and tube, um, stainless steel 2020 mesh. And I just got a set of tin snips and cut them, took a bit of a little bit of playing around to get them sizes right so they don't foul the um, ball in the bottom. And yeah, just sit that in there so that when the, if they've got mastitis, clinical mastitis, and it's the chunky stuff, you can see it in there instantly. During the springtime for the first six weeks, every cow, every time the cups came off, we would open every set of cups up and see straight in there to see if they had anything. If they had anything, we could separate them out, keep it, you know, and just then we'd RNT them the next milking after that so they had milk on board and we could get straight on top of any problems we had. And generally when I'm milking, it's simple enough when they've been hanging, I can just look in the side like that, see if there's anything in there and carry on. And I think the sheet is metre by a metre or whatever, was only a hundred odd bucks. If I knew that cow had mastitis, I would hang that set of cups up and I wouldn't use those set of cups for the rest of milking can spray iodine in them and bits and pieces, but if she's got real bad mastitis, I'd rather take milking a little bit longer and just isolate those cups. We had an automatic teat race, and Mary recommended that we go back to manually teat spraying. It takes about 10 or 15 minutes longer to milk, but the system, I think, was about seven grand, and I've got two $100 Cambrian sprayers, um, so bang for your buck. And the other thing with manually te hands teat spraying is you're actually looking at those udders every time. So you're seeing if, oh, that quarter's not milked out properly or why is that one swollen and hard? You know, so you've got that visual as well. Um, 
So yeah, it just makes sense. And we use a lot less teat spray now and mix our teat spray up only in small doses. So five litres at a time, so it's always fresh. And um, that seems to have a, because it goes off if you mix up big batches at once. So that seems to be having a good effect. Like most things, just got to do the basics right and just keep on to it all the time. Like if you find a cow with mastitis, or you think she's got mastitis, separate her out from the mob and keep an eye on her and milk her last, because that's what happens, they transfer from one set of cups to the next cow, so on and so forth. She might come in the first row, she could infect five, ten cows. They're good cows, you don't want to be culling cows because of one bad one. You know, you just got to keep on it. If you've got a problem, the first thing I'd do would be herd test. LIC will give you the information on those cows straight away and then within a week you can get those cows out and look at them, sample their milk and make a decision on what you're going to do with them from there, whether they're beyond help or not. And don't be afraid to cull a cow because, you know, you might say she's a good cow, she's doing X amount of solids or she's, you know, she's not a good cow, she's got staph mastitis and she's infecting the rest of your herd. Um, we had real problems with tipping out heifers because they were getting infected. You know, it costs you thirteen, fifteen hundred dollars to get them in the herd. They do one lactation and they're out because they've got mastitis, a high cell count. Well, that's just, you might as well throw your money up in the air on a windy day. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.